Digging deeper on a prophetic revelation I received recently. The eagle, the field, and the famine. You're having coffee with Conrad. Conrad rocks! Welcome, everyone, to another edition of Coffee with Conrad. This is definitely a prophetic um, series that I'm getting into now. I normally don't release visions as quickly as I did this last weekend, um, but there seems to be a sense of urgency about this. And I normally have a habit of praying it through. You know how Peter received the vision of the blanket with the unclean animals and he contemplated and thought about it and prayed it through and he says oh I'm supposed to preach to the the Gentiles dreams in the Bible and visions in the Bible are not usually interpreted like right away normally it takes a couple of people or some time you know Joseph had to interpret Pharaoh's dream Daniel interpreted Nebuchadnezzar or like I said, it takes some time, you know, just just to pray it through. God likes a dialogue with his people. So I started noticing that other people were immediately talking about eagles and light and darkness, and I'm like, oh wow, this is it's not just me. And sometimes the idea that if God gives you something, you know, that I tell you in the darkness, shout off the rooftops. If you don't, he'll give it to someone else. And then also there's a part where we're out of the mouths of two or three witnesses, every matter shall be established. So, you know, two or three prophesy, the other will judge, and so forth. And um, I, I felt a sense of urgency, so I went ahead and released the YouTube video. The link will be included in the show notes to this podcast. Now, I have a burden not only of a sense of urgency, but also that my words are carrying more weight. And I'm not saying that from a cocky perspective. It's like I'm, I'm, I'm more fearful. Um, you know, Jesus says we will be judged by every idle word that comes out of our mouth. I'm like, well, wow, man, there's some salt water coming out of this freshwater mouth every once in a while. You know, and out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. And I'm just like, oh, man... I got to make this tree good myself, you know? So tons of revelation has been poured out recently. I mean, more so than usual. It's it's as if the Lord has opened the floodgates of rhema revelation. When I listen to the logos, you know, the word, the written word, and I go about my chores, I'm extremely blown away by what the spirit of truth is illuminating. He's lighting it up. And I'm, I'm sensing right now that we're at a very important time in history. Our generation is being sifted. And it's becoming more and more apparent daily. Now, I heard this morning in Scripture, as I was pondering about what to say in this podcast, Revelation 22, 10 through 13. And he saith unto me, Seal not the sayings of the prophecy of this book, for the time is at hand. He that is unjust, let him be unjust still, and he which is filthy, let him be filthy still. He that is righteous, let him be righteous still, and he that is holy, let him be holy still. And behold, I come quickly, and my reward is with me, to give every man according to his work shall be. I am the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end, the first and the last. Now, I'm not alarmist, but the, the section of that passage that I heard in my spirit is him that is filthy let him be filthy still and the way I communicate with God you know he'll give me a few few words and then I look it up and I look at the surrounding text and I begin praying it through from there and from this passage I feel that there's a door closing I mean if you read the passage he's talking to people that are alive on the earth 
you know, and he says, let them be filthy still, let the righteous be righteous still. And I'm like, wow, that means they're not going to change. So I feel that we need to start focusing seriously on the work the Lord has for us and stop putting other things in front of it. You know, saving America from hell and the American church from hell or the church in America is much more important than watching football or American Idol or, or anything else. You know, in the big picture, when we, when we jump up above the earth and we look at it from the heavenly perspective, from the throne of God, in the big picture of through the... You know, this, this life we're living right now is a blip on the radar of eternity. We need to look at things from God's perspective, from the big per- picture. And, you know, I see that we're letting our nation slip away. And it's is as if the rod of authority that the Lord had given the founding fathers is slipping from our hands. The baton has been passed on to us, and it's like there's Vaseline in our hand, and, and the devil is stealing that baton. He's stealing the scepter that was given the founding fathers that bowed the knee in prayer and sought Jesus diligently. It's up to us. It's up to us to move from lukewarm to on fire. Remember 2 Chronicles 7.14 says, If my people. So today, I'm going to talk about the vision I received this last Saturday during worship. After this. You are having coffee with Conrad on ConradRocks.net. What does it mean to walk after the Spirit? What is the prophetic gift all about? Hi, I'm Conrad from ConradRocks.net. I talk about walking after the Spirit of God, and I often wax prophetic. Jesus is real, and He wants to have a relationship with you. Check out my podcast on ConradRocks.net. That's ConradRocks.net. Welcome back. Now, the Lord impressed upon me to worship this last Saturday. Drop everything and worship. Now, I've learned that it's a good idea to drop everything and worship when the Lord calls me to do so, because if I don't, you know, he'll give the revelation to someone else that's willing. God's looking for willing vessels, vessels that put him first over everything else. So I grab my guitar And I knew I was about to go on a prophetic adventure as soon as I sat down. I mean, as soon as he called me to do that, I'm like, there's something. He doesn't he doesn't say stuff and not come through. That's what I've noticed. And as I worship, I began immediately to see an eagle flying in the darkness. This darkness was so dark that the eagle could not see. And I was searching for the significance of the eagle as I prayed about it later. And this verse stuck out to me. Um, and to the woman were given two wings of a great eagle. I'm going to read the passage, okay? And then and you'll go, wow, this is pretty awesome. Okay, Revelation 12, 11 through 15. And they overcome by the blood of the Lamb and by the word of their testimony, and they love not their lives unto the death. Therefore rejoice, ye heavens, and ye that dwell in them. Woe to the inhabitants of the earth and of the sea, for the devil has come down unto you having great wrath, because he knoweth that his time short. And when the dragon saw that he was cast into the earth, he persecuted the woman which brought forth the man-child. That's Jesus, right? And the woman were given two wings of a great eagle that she might fly into the wilderness into her place where she's nourished for a time and a times and a half a time from the face of the serpent. And the serpent cast out of his mouth water as a flood after the woman that he might cause her to be carried away by the flood. Now, you notice many times... There's eagles in the Bible. Uh, a lot of people, like, they'll put eagles on their prophetic symbology. It rep- represents something prophetic quite often. Man, there's many times. But I, I want to bring something else to your attention here. Uh, Daniel 7, 3, and 4. And four great peace beasts came up from the sea, diverse one from another. The first was like a lion, and it had eagle's wings. And I beheld the wings thereof were plucked. And it was lifted up from the earth and made stand upon the feet as a man, and as a man heart was given unto it. Now, I want you to understand, 
this could be a prophetic type and shadow of Daniel, but I, there, there's something that I'm not sure if you're aware of this, but the Royal Arms of England, the coat of arms of England is a lion. It's lions, right? So England is often represented as a lion. England wasn't really around at the time Daniel was written. But I want you to understand something else. A lot of us came from England, and we had the wings of an eagle. We, we, we ran across the sea, right? And we were lifted from the earth, and we stood up as the feet of a man. Now, we, we talk about Uncle Sam, right? Uncle Sam. So we went from England, this, the lion, Flying over here, we have this symbol of an eagle now, right, America. And we often talk about Uncle Sam. So I'm like, going, wow, you know, maybe this eagle that I'm seeing here has to do with America. So I'm not going to say I'm 100% correct on that, but I was praying about it. I'm like, those did come to, to my memory. Um, I'm not sure if that's a bullseye, though, but there's something to that. I think this the prophetic symbol of the eagle is prophetic and America is flying blind right now we need a prophetic voice America the eagle is flying in darkness we don't know where she's going to land correct we don't know where we're headed we're flying blind so I sense that this was warfare I did not want this eagle to keep flying in darkness I didn't want it to stay in darkness and I so I persisted in worship with vigor, and I prayed and sang prophetically as I saw things and as I heard things in the Spirit. As I worshiped, I sensed that worship is exactly what we as Christians in America need to do right now. The problem is we cannot see. We're flying blind. We cannot fly forever. We will fatigue and drop dead, right? So this great eagle, even this great eagle, needs to land. Worship. Now, we all know God inhabits the praises of his people. He's enthroned in worship. We know that God is light. We need light, meaning we need God. 1 John 1, 5, Then This then is the message which we've heard of him and declare unto you that God is light, and in him is no darkness at all. So if we're looking at this darkness, well, there's no God, <laughs> right? Wait a minute. The eagle's in darkness. Where's God in all of this? then we have a serious problem. And you know the Bible says that we must worship God in spirit and truth. I keep talking about this forever, it seems. But the hour cometh and now is where the true worshipers, true, shall worship the Father in spirit and in truth. The Father seeketh such to worship him. God is a spirit. How many times I got to say that? It's in the Bible. God's a spirit. They that worship him must worship worship him in spirit and truth. Now, notice at the time Jesus was saying that, he says that the hour's now. The hour's now. We need to stop our false worshiping and doing what we think is worship and what has been handed down to us over the decades or centuries of our theological brainwashing. We need to worship the Lord in truth. Seek him diligently. He's rewarded those who diligently seek him. We need God to light up our path. We must not maybe, worship the Lord in spirit and truth. America is spiritually dead right now. Many teachers, prophets, pastors are running in many different directions. I see it right now. I see people just going different directions in their own chariots of their own designs, their own denominations. They're turning, we're, we're turning our swords on each other by inter denominationalism we're attacking each other with the word I mean we're we're hedging ourselves in with the study to show thyself approved now I'm cocky and justified by my scriptural position Paul was too Paul Saul Paul the one that was killing Christians <laughs> using the word he he had built himself he made an island of his theology, and he was not, he didn't even know Jesus. The first thing he says to Jesus is, Who art thou, Lord? He didn't even know the author of the scripture. So we're getting selfish, we're building barriers inside what we perceive to be the Word of God, and we need to actually have a relationship with the spiritual God. Paul had a spiritual encounter. That's why he talks about, Hey, we need to walk after the Spirit, homeboy. 
<laughs> he, he, he caught the fire. He caught the fire so much that instead of persecuting people, he was excited about getting persecuted. He would sing in prison with Barnabas, you know? He would be stoned and left for dead because he was preaching the truth. And he would go right back into the city. We have scriptural justification built in our own carnal reasoning. But who's going to pick up the sword of the Lord? Who's going to pick up the sword of God? So if you remember, I'm referring to the vision the Lord gave me the week before. And I made a series out of it. Who's going to pick up the sword of the Lord? So check that out. But we must worship the Lord in spirit and truth. This means to truly seek God, not using him as a genie in the bottle to serve our selfish agendas. I see so many people taking scriptures out of context, not looking at the fullness of what the revelation was, and using that as a church craft. (laughs) Remember witchcraft in the church? That's another revelation. Um, But trying to manipulate things against the will of God. You know, James even says it. You ask and ask amiss that you may receive. You don't get it because you're trying to get it to fulfill your selfish lusts. So, I think I beat that to death, though. But we need to persistently and truly seek God so that the eagle can see where to fly. Now, as I was watching this vision, I was frustrated because there was darkness, and in, and in God there is no darkness. He's light, right? There's no sun in the New Jerusalem. He, he, he lights up everything. He's light. And I wanted to curse the darkness and yell at it, but that's not going to solve our problem. Yelling at the fruit of darkness, the fruits of the evil tree, is not going to turn on the light. That's not how you don't yell at darkness to turn on the light. We need the light. We need to make the tree good and therefore its fruit and not not yell at the bad fruit of the tree. So I persisted worshiping, knowing that God inhabits the praises of his people. And as I worshiped, I finally saw a crack of light in the darkness. An earthquake in the darkness opened up. This crack of light came like an earthquake ripple in the darkness, and it reminded me of how there was an earthquake when Jesus consummated the new covenant in his death. The veil was rent in two. If you remember Matthew 27, verses 50 through 52, Jesus, when he had cried again with a loud voice, yielded up the ghost, and behold, the veil of the temple was rent in twain from the top to the bottom, and the earth did quake, and the rocks rent, and the graves were opened, and the bodies of the saints which slept arose. So there was an earthquake, and then the veil was rent when he gave up the ghost also Matthew 4 16 and 17 I heard that as well the people which sat in darkness we're sitting in darkness people the people which sat in darkness saw great light and to them which sat in the region the shadow of death light has sprung up I'm telling you I saw this earthquake bring light into this darkness and then Jesus began to preach in Matthew four sixteen and 17, Repent, for the kingdom of heaven is, hand, is at hand. These scriptures are tied together. We're sitting in darkness. We need to worship in spirit and truth so that we can see where to land. <laughs> we need to see where to land. So from the shadow of death, light has sprung up. And this is exactly what I saw in the vision. Light makes the darkness flee. In Jesus, there is no darkness. So I'm going to continue the series, The Eagle, The Field, and The Famine, in the next podcast. Now, just so you guys know, I'm releasing for the month of September in 2015 the free uh, a free series on hearing God. It's called Hindrances to the Truth. It's free for the asking. Just send me an email, conrad at conradrocks.net. That's Conrad at ConradRocks.net. Or subscribe on the subscription page at ConradRocks.net. If you send me an email, put in the subject line, Hearing God. Now, I was going to write a book, and I made it a seven-part co- podcast series. So, And it's free to you just for asking. Now, stay tuned for the continuation of the series, The Eagle, The Field, and The Famine. God bless you. Till we meet again, dig deeper and go higher. Today's 
Dig deeper, go higher at comraderocks.net.